Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here. All right, so let me talk about something in this video. Uh, marketing versus sales, all right? Now, popped into my mind because of a, a call I did yesterday where uh, where I was talking to a younger investor, uh, wants to get into the development game, okay? And as well as a couple of other clients that I may be working with. And uh, it dawned on me that there really isn't a distinction between marketing and salespeople, right? And here is the biggest thing that I discovered in this conversation, right? Like I'm having a conversation with this lady, okay? Been in the business over 30 years, all right? And uh, she's explaining to me some of the challenges that she's having in her business this year, right? So she is, oh, I'm asking like, so, okay, so how, how much volume you do last year? And she was just like, well, it was a really, really bad, bad year. I'm supposed to be doing a lot more than that. And I was just like, okay, so, so let me ask the direct question. Uh, how much volume did you do? She goes, two million. I'm like, okay. There's no, no right or wrong answer, two million, great, thank you so much, I write it down. And then I said, okay, now where are you right now, year to date, on your production? And then she goes, well, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And I said, look, let me ask another direct question, where are you right now, year to date? And uh, she goes, like around the same amount. Oh, okay, two million. So run rate, you're actually gonna do a little bit better than this year. And she was just like, well, I guess so. And I was like, okay, fair enough. And then I write it down. And then I go and I says, okay, so you mentioned earlier that you do a lot more than this. So what is your typical average in your 30 years that you have done? And she's all like, well, a lot more. And then by this time, I'm getting a little agitated, right? Okay, because the tonality and the voice that she's using with me, right, is like, hey, I know it all. Hey, come on, Jeff, come be the savior and save my business, okay? So I'm trying to keep my cool because I know I've ran into this kind of individuals before all the time. So I'm like, okay. And I said, thank you so much. Now, let me ask a different question. I said, okay, what was your goal at this beginning of this year that you wanted to hit in January 2017? And she was just like, 20 million. And I was just like, okay, so that was 10 times more, meaning a thousand times percentage of where you're currently at, almost. A thousand percentage. She's like, I guess so. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then I said, all right, well, if you and I, if we were to have a conversation 12 months from today, and uh, we're sitting down and we're hanging out, having a cup of coffee, what needs to happen both in your personal life and business life for you to feel as though you have progressed? And then she was just like, wow, good question. Definitely need to do twin million. And I wanna definitely take on to do more vacations that I wanna take. And I said, and we're talking about in 12 months. And she's like, yeah. Now, regardless of what business that you're in, if you're definitely in the real estate business, right? Maybe you'll start understanding this, right? The person is at last two years, $2 million in production, right? So in terms of commission that they're making is maybe like 50 grand, right? Like if you use the math on that. And suddenly and magically, they want to uh, jump up to 20 million, 10X. We're talking about a thousand percent growth, okay? Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible to do in terms of that type of growth, okay? Because I don't believe anything is impossible. I think is everything is doable. The question is, what is the probability, the likelihood, and the propensity of you being able to reach that? Now, so I explained, I said, look, have you ever hit that number, <laughs> right? I asked that question and she was just like, no, but that's always been my goal. And I was just like, that's always been your goal, okay. And it's kind of funny because, you know, literally, I don't know what it is, but there's like two people, uh, like yesterday I spoke to, that had the same type of number, right? So I'm kind of like smashing together their storylines in, in one or the thing that they're telling me. And, um, and I'm just like, where are they getting this number from? Then it dawned on me. I'm just like, ah, it's, it's the broker. It's the people that they're surrounding themselves in is that they're continuously telling them to hit those type of numbers, right? Because if they run those numbers uh, and says, okay, 20 million, you do two and a half percent commission, 3% or whatever, and they're just like, oh yeah, 600 grand, grand GCI. Oh, 450 GCI. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And, and then I asked the question, right? Right, because by the time you, you can tell if they, number one, know their numbers, right? So if they don't know their numbers, that's an issue in itself right now it was a good thing that she has goals because I'm a firm believer that you should have goals all right now the goals are definitely not in alignment with the skill sets that she has I think and we'll talk about a little bit what I'm talking about will tie into marketing and sales right and and especially the goals are literally it's a wish list because she doesn't have an action plan 
okay? Now, you hear people talk about like the book, like uh, Think Big, right? Um, like I'm a, I'm, I'm a big thinker, trust me, okay? I think big, like, like weird stuff, I think big, but I, I'm very systematic and strategic to say, okay, you got your big goal, then it says, okay, what's the next little baby step you gotta take to get to the next level, right? So, so what are some of the steps that you would do to attain that goal? And she said, she said to me, she says, Jeff, this is why I'm talking to you. And I said, okay, fair enough, <laughs> right? And I said, all right, well, what if I was not involved? How would you actually attain that? All right? And she was just like, well, I didn't, I, I haven't thought about it. Now, why is this important, okay? Is because though that language pattern of what that person said will tie in directly to um, what they're currently doing in their actual business, all right? Now, hold on, as I walk into the office here, um, Give me a second here, okay? Is because this is literally boils down to management by abdication, ladies and gentlemen. Management by abdication. You try to delegate and abdicate your responsibility of your business to someone else. And a lot of times, people do that, okay? I've done that in the past. You probably have done it in your past too. And how do you actually do that? With either getting new software, new little widgets. We all do this which is we don't want to take on full responsibility. I've done this. So this lady basically said, hey, that's why I'm talking to you. And um, I knew at this time, I was just like, man, this is gonna be a challenge because she doesn't want to take on the responsibility, both of them, of where they're currently at in their business and somehow magically, I'm going to be able to help that, right? So then we have a little bit deeper conversation and I said, okay, so what are some of the things that you believe that you're very good at? And uh, they both kind of said, I'm very good with people. I think I'm very good at closing people if I can get in front of them. And I was just like, oh, okay. But then they said, but I don't like to actually be aggressive and go after and call people or follow up with people. You know, if I just get in front of them, I'll definitely close them. Now, what a contradiction, wouldn't you agree? On that statement alone, right? A lot of like extroverted people, right? Think that they're really, really good salespeople. Like me, I'm an introvert by heart. Okay, I don't like doing this kind of stuff, right? But a lot of people who are like very naturally friendly, like to like talk to people, go up to people, believe that they're really, really great salespeople. But I'm a firm believer that great salespeople are trained. And if you are a sales, born salesperson, you know, like you'll just simply pick up the phone and call people and dial out and try to get a conversation, make a way to make a sale happen, okay? Versus just thinking that you are somehow magically really great and in reality you're not and uh, they convince themselves that, oh, I just need to get in front of people, right? So because they focus on sales side and they think that they're really good when in reality they're not, they don't focus on the marketing side because the marketing side is different than sales, right? The brain has to operate a little bit differently. So in my case, I <laughs> stunk at both, all right? Growing up, I stunk at both. I'm just more of like a thinker, just like to sit, right? So I did sales, I didn't like it, okay? But I learned it, meaning pounding for dollars, right? Calling on the phone, literally sit there for freaking six hours straight, calling, 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 calling. You know, got some results, got some sales. Okay, then as someone says, go do some door knocking stuff. So I've done that, you know, walking down 2nd Street and Tommy's Burgers is. If anyone's in Los Angeles, you know where that's at. I used to knock on all the businesses uh, throughout that, right? I used, to, I used to knock on that, right? In downtown little Tokyo, things like that, right? Like I used to knock on businesses, knock on businesses, right? And try to pitch people all day long. Then it transitioned into using like, you know, fax blast and fax machines. And then we would go to apartment buildings, build relationships, network, right? Right? So, so you get used to that as long as you keep on doing it over and over, right? Like I'm talking about like old school, like if you're in the real estate business, right? The title people do it, which is they like randomly pop into your office and they're like, here you go, here's some donuts, right? And I would do that and did it work 100%, okay? It worked, but it would have to be consistent over and over, right? Like literally drop off business cards with like stuff in like holders and stuff like that so they can have it right in front of them, right? Hand, right handwritten thank you cards, right? Like I did all that stuff, right? Now, that's part of the sales side that's with a little bit of marketing, right? But what I've come to realize what makes things so much easier is marketing. And if you can focus on marketing side, you can be pretty bad at sales, but you're gonna convert more. Especially like my strength, I say, is like selling from a distance, right? Like I'm pretty good, like if I'm face to face, if I get in because I've been taught, but I'm, more, I'm much better selling from like a further away. Okay, why is because I can put people strategically through 
the sequence and process and qualifiers, disqualifiers, and then get them to a point where by the time I ask for money or I ask people to say, hey, okay, that document, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? I don't have to power close. I don't have to do that kind of stuff, right? Now, can I do that to ask for it where people can't make a decision? Can I push them to do it because I believe that that's the best decision they should? 100%. Right, but the point I want to make is that component. All right, now, now one of the books I'm going to give you a suggestion because I'm going to do a lot more book reviews and things like that. Right, is Scientific Advertisement, Cloud Hopkins, very short book. Read it. Okay, it's really really good. Pre-selling, persuasion, pre-framing, right, indoctrination, whatever you want to call it. It's just convincing. Uh, having people already believe in something to do it. So for example, you can even do this in the social sphere, right? Like I was talking to a broker when I was out in the San Francisco Bay Area about this, where when I was raising money for my real estate investment company, right? Before I asked for money from my investors, I would run a retargeting campaign in front of them uh, with a new, uh, Los Angeles Time article talking about now is the best time to invest in real estate um, because properties are discounted and people are making tons of money. So guess what? I'm running that advertisement in front of those investors. Now, it's not tied to me. It is not tied to me because I've disguised it in a way. So it's not a fake news, it's the real news, but I'm controlling it and social engineering it, running that advertisement in front of them. So when I actually simply pick up the phone and I call them and I say, hey, by the way, you know what? I have a great deal coming up and I wanted to give you first right of refusal to see if you wanted to invest in this particular project. I'm sure you've read the article from LA Times. If you haven't, go check it out. And they'll be like, yeah, I've seen that. Right? Not knowing the fact that I've ran that advertisement in front of those people. Right? People do that all day long, right? And I, I'm a firm believer that that's the route that marketing on online is gonna go, where you pre-frame them, you indoctrinate them ahead of times, and when you do that, and people are not aware that you're part of doing that, right? Woo, man. You got an upper hand. So you can do that all day long. You just have to be a little bit smart about it. Now, if you don't know the mechanics on how to do it, you can learn that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. That's easy stuff, like what buttons to push, where to go, what to do, right? That's always the easy stuff, but the strategy is key. So that's why so many people, when they come to marketing, right? Have you ever heard them say, well, I've tried direct mail, it didn't work. I've tried door knocking, it didn't work. I've tried cold calling, it didn't work. I've tried to build a relationship, it didn't work. The question is, is that mode of doing that something is the thing that does not work? No, it's not. It's your approach, your strategy, the strategy that do you that you're doing that tactical thing on like picking up the phone and calling for people is not working for you why is because your strategy or your script or whatever you have is not working you have not learned about tonality pitch control right um you're like yeah sounding enthusiastic when you actually pick up the phone and call them smiling when you actually do it because of your pitch if they're an older person do you slow down so they can actually understand you a little bit better if they're a fast talker do you actually try to talk faster than faster than them Right? Like those are things you gotta recognize when you're actually doing that, right? If you're meeting face to face, do you actually watch and pay attention to what they what they do? Are they hiding their thumb? Or if they're hiding their thumb, typically they mean that they're nervous. Are they in a power stance? Do they actually open up wide like this with their arms on the side like this? Then that means that they wanna actually take up more space and they're in power control. Do they put their hands in a kind of a diamond shape when they're talking to you around their mouth, right? That's a power move. Do when they stand up and look at you, do they actually have their hands down like this? On on the table like those are all power moves and you got to recognize that because you you either shatter that frame that they have on the other side or and or you give your frame away to them so that way they can feel like they're in control or whatever right like those are things you got to learn but anyways that's what i got i got to get to work i'll do more of this so if you liked this video do me a huge favor share it with your friends or hit the subscribe button or find me on the internet space um really if you got any questions i i personally recommend don't just leave a comment Feel free to reach out. Just because we're in the space of internet land doesn't mean that I'm not a real person. I don't respond, uh, that I'm not going to respond back. I do so. And the folks that have interacted with me, especially in the live space, Coleco, um, I think I saw uh, Clive as well, Jason, and a couple other people I've seen. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully you got value out of it. Go out there. Keep, uh, keep learning. Keep growing. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it is not a leap of faith in business, but it is a leap of skills. So develop a new skill set. All right. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.